Do you know why I'm wearing black? Because I'm coming to a funeral. The whole mood is going to be spoiled. Now they want to go home. How? But why are we going home? But did you see the way that guy was looking at you? And hello, now you looked in his direction. Why? Hi, bo. This person can't come to you and be like, my exes are all crazy. You are the common denominator, sir. What do you mean? You're going to find yourself digging through the dirt. You're going to be finding yourself digging through the dirt just for an apology. What did you do? Yeah? Mzwaki, Mzwaki, what did you do? Tell the truth, bro. Even in situations where they know they are wrong, they would rather go out of their way to explain, to dissect, to build you a diagram. It shows you that they are never gonna sacrifice themselves or their comfort or their stability for you. However, if they are not, hmm? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the video. This is going to be a really exciting one for me because I did a video last year where I had all of you guys contribute to it in terms of on Instagram and I put up a little question bar and I said, what red flags should you look out for in relationships, right? Men and women, blah, blah, blah. But now this time, and that video was viewed so well and the engagement was really great in that video. And I thought it's really important for us to keep looking out for these red flags i think that sometimes we forget the problem is that sometimes we forget it we slip into just ease and calm and stagnant waters and we forget that the dating pool has pee in it we forget yes so a lot of the time we overlook these red flags because yeah no i'm not going to look at that red flag until it's maroon or you want it to move from just a light light shade of red till it gets to a deep maroon for you to actually see that oh my gosh yes this is actually a red flag so i'm definitely going to be doing two videos red flags in men specifically and red flags in women specifically two different videos yes some of the pointers are going to gel together because as humans we're humans we feel the same certain things we act out the same certain types of behaviors but some of them are going to be explained very differently for men than they are for women and there are some pointers that you will specifically spot a lot more in women than in men and vice versa so i'm really really excited i jotted them down a couple of days ago and i was just like this is exciting this is exciting I do this. This is exciting. So, uh, welcome to the video. If you do enjoy my content, please continue to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the videos. It really doesn't cost you anything. It's free of charge. Just like it. And also comment because I love to read your guys' comments. I love to engage with you. Repost the videos if you want to put it on your Instagram or your TikTok. And tag me on there because I also love seeing that. I do also have a channel membership space if you do want to check check that out as well definitely do if you care to so let's get started into the red flags of men and you know why I'm wearing black do you know why I'm wearing black because I'm coming to a funeral <laughs> of men because one thing we're gonna do as women this year is standing our business controlling behavior let me tell you if you are with a man who suddenly wants to control how you dress suddenly has an opinion about the dress that you are wearing that it's too short maybe your makeup is a little bit too heavy why are you wearing that kind of makeup why are you wearing your hair like that why are you going there at a certain time what time are you going to come back isn't that a little bit too late no but you and your friends hey i don't appreciate your friends i don't like how your friends friends are making you turn out to be I don't appreciate what they are doing to you um no um I really don't like it when you go to your family's house every single weekend at which point are you going to spend time with me controlling behavior is them wanting to isolate you not only do they want to change you they have judgments on you and your body and they also want to isolate you 
You can reconnect to Wi-Fi from your Google Home app under Devices, then set up. They, they want to control, oh my God, it scared me so much. <laughs> they want to control your behavior. They want to isolate you. They're already making judgments about you, your body, how you look, what you should be wearing, where you should be going and with who. They're already making judgments about your friends, about your family, about the people that are around you because they want to control. And the point and purpose of control is to isolate. They want to isolate you so that you don't even feel comfortable in making the decisions that you make in your head anymore. You don't even feel comfortable making those decisions. Decisions that you used to make before you met this person. Do you understand what I'm saying? These are decisions that you used to make that they had no problem with when you were dating and all of this. Now all of a sudden, they feel like, uh -uh, you shouldn't be wearing that skirt, it's too short. No, I really don't like your best friend. I'm so, so what? What do you even mean, bro? Controlling behavior is used as a form of isolation and a, fo a form to change who you actually are. And okay, jealousy. Now, <laughs> right. if a man is jealous, let me tell you something, jealousy has varying degrees, okay? And it's either here or it's either here. There's never ever really a middle ground when it comes to jealousy. So if a man is going to be jealous, it's that healthy kind, right? You don't want to be with a man who, who just, uh, he doesn't care. Like he doesn't, he doesn't want to know more if you're going to be meeting your male friend. He doesn't care about where you are, how you, and he doesn't show signs of, you know, a, a healthy kind of, I love this person, she's my person, this, 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 and they have any sort of commentary. And then you have, that's, that, that's cool. Like, I think, I think that's cool. That they can get away with, right? We all have elements of jealousy because what belongs to us belongs to us. And we want to be very vocal about the fact that it belongs to me and it don't belong to you, madam, right? But then at the same time, there's the bad jealousy. Right. And this jealousy, again, is linked with controlling behavior. Right. They want to know why, who your male friends are. They want to know about your sexual history so that they can make judgments of it. Like, hey, when I when I hear whatever people, oh, they get jealous because they want to control and they want to possess. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's that unhealthy kind where they want to know where you are what you're doing, who you're doing it with. If this person is already doing that, you must know one thing. It's very unhealthy behavior and you need to nip it in the bud. That is a big red flag. In actual fact, that flag is maroon. The jealousy aspect always comes in where they're jealous of whoever it is that you spend time with. It's not just men. They're not just jealous about how other men look at you when you're out in the club and when you're out together having dinner and then now all of a sudden they're mad because this guy from the, across the table was looking at you like, damn, she's nice. Instead of, instead of that being like, yeah, yeah, you can look at her. She's mine though, but you can look at her. No, instead they're going to be jealous. The whole mood is going to be spoiled. Now they want to go home. How, but why are we going home? But did you see the way that guy was looking at you? And Eloy, now you looked in his direction. Why? Hi, bo. Ah, what a far no man. Ah, eh. Oh, what? Eh. Hey, bo. Briga pova. Briga pova. What are you talking about, right? I have no idea what you're talking about. You gotta look out for them. You have to look out for them because it does not end well. It never does end well. It's not only about other men. They're jealous of your friends. They're jealous that you're constantly spending time with your friends, even though you only see your friends twice in a month. They're jealous. If they're unreliable and untrustworthy, this is directly linked to trust, okay? A lot of the time, if somebody is unreliable, you ask them to do something, they say they're gonna do it and they never do. You ask them that, okay, we need to be at the restaurant at 8 p.m. because that's when the reservation is for, and then they rock up at nine, or they don't pitch. Okay, when they don't pitch, that's even worse, right? But they rock up at nine. You can't trust them to do what they say that they're going to do. This becomes a huge trust issue. And when 
trust is tampered with, trust is broken, then the connection will eventually be broken, right? So the trust doesn't necessarily have to be broken because it's, 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 it, there's a, there's a sintaulele in the picture. There's a, there's a miponi in the picture. Not necessarily. Trust can be broken with just the fact that this person is not reliable. Could you please go pick up my dress from the dry cleaners because I need to wear it tomorrow. I can't right now. I'm at a shoot. So honey, could you please pick up my dress from the dry cleaners? And they don't. And tomorrow is Sunday. The dry cleaners are closed. What do you then do? So somebody who is unreliable and untrustworthy really tampers with the connection that the two of you have. And they will continuously do it over and over again. It's one thing to do it once or twice. It's one thing for Sposiso to just once disappoint you twice, disappoint you, whatever. It's one thing. But for them to continuously do it over and over again gives a sense of they are not reliable. You cannot rely on them. That's why you end up asking your friend to do this, 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 or to help you with this, this. Because you know that this person is not going to come through for you. They're not going to pull through for you when you need them the most. And because of that, cut it. Yo. If by it's every day. Shum. Next one. Ooh, this one, this one, this one is this one is huge and this one is really serious and it works both ways, right? Substance abuse. <sighs> you need to pay close attention to your person, right? It's people who take uh, marijuana, right? They take the marijuana. There's people who drink alcohol. There's people who any kind of soma, fama, powders. No, no, I just do it when I'm having a good time. You know, when I want to have a good time. That, right, right, the sniff, sniff, right? I'm just, I just do it when I want to have a good time or when I want to unwind or whatever. If they become heavily reliant on those things to get through their day they're doing them every single day you need to keep an eye on your partner you need to be aware of some of the things that are not necessarily healthy habits and you need to get them either you know you need to communicate it with them or you need to put them up to speed with it like bro do you realize that you actually do this every day or bro do you realize whatever because the reason why substance abuse becomes a really, really big problem for a relationship and why it becomes a red flag in people is the fact that it highlights underlying issues. There is something that that person doesn't want to face, confront, and they use these things as a coping mechanism. A lot of the time they use it as a coping mechanism where they're just like, you know what, let me just have a drink or two and then I'll be fine. Let me just have a drink or two, I'll be fine. Then that happens once and then it happens every three days. Then it happens every day. Now it's happening even during the day. Even, even, even when this person is working, this is unhealthy. And it, under, it, it, it really just highlights severely it's like a beep, 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 right a red flag that there is actually a deeper underlying issue why are you doing this what are you stressed about do you need therapy it could underline emotional trauma it could underline a childhood trauma it could underline they are trying to run away from something this is why they are doing this what is it so you can help them but if you can see that it doesn't change, let me tell you something. A lot of the time, if it doesn't change, the person will not give up that little habit of theirs just because you said something. Mm -mm. They won't. They won't. That's when you should realize that maybe this is a red flag. Maybe it's about time for me to dip out because if they're not going to do that, and you can see that it's all day, every day now, it's a problem. Big, big 
big problem. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. This is my favorite one. This is my favorite one. My exes are all crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever heard them come to you and be like, yo, hey, my exes are all crazy. This one did this. This one did this. This one did this. The moment a person comes to you and talk, when you're talking about your exes and all of this, and this person then says to you, my exes are all crazy. Red freaking flag. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? This is a major red flag. This person can't come to you and be like, my exes are all crazy. You are the common denominator, sir. What do you mean? You can't come at me and tell, tell me all your exes are crazy. One was this, one was that, blah, blah, blah. When you are the CD here, you are the common denominator. I would worry. <laughs> I would worry if somebody is going to always constantly bash their exes, call them crazy. This one had no idea. This one had her screw loose. There was a bolt missing. This one did this, this, this one. What did you do? Yeah? Mzwaki. Mzwaki. What did you do? Tell the truth, bro. Aye. Aye, Debo. Mm-mm. Mm, every time, every time it was me pony, every time it was the poor, every time it was Sencha, it was Palesa, it was Mbali. Every time it's all your other exes but you. Why? Why? What did you do, Demo? You can't always be, let me tell you, if they've got nothing positive to say about any of their exes, nobody really has anything positive to say, right? But if they've got nothing positive to say and all of them seem to have a problem and not him nope it's a no for me nope i'm just saying oh, man. let me tell you something if you meet a person and get into a relationship with a person who does not want to compromise that is a red flag somebody who doesn't want to compromise or sacrifice for the greater good of the relationship or for the greater good of the dating experience whatever it may be that person just doesn't want to sacrifice or compromise they are a red flag because it essentially just tells you that they will never choose you over them especially for a certain situation of course people must choose themselves first a absolutely we, we agree but if in this particular situation you're like listen i want you to come hang out with my friends bro i want you to come hang out with my friends let's, let's hang out man somebody's doing a brian or what 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 hi 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 or they don't want to compromise their time they would rather do whatever it is that they want to do in their time on their time and never want to compromise for the sake of the relationship or for the sake of you, this is a major red flag. What the hell are we gonna do now? It shows you that they are never gonna sacrifice themselves or their comfort or their stability for you. And this is a red flag, especially if you think or you believe that you're building something with someone because compromise and sacrifice is a standard. Now, some people might struggle with it, absolutely, but then you start to see little things that change where they're like, okay, I'm ashamed Katlo did tell me about this. Hey, she did tell me about this. And then they start doing things a little bit differently. They're trying. They're trying. That is different. But if somebody says, Bridja, Bridja, bring up over, no, 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 from the onset, cut. If they can't compromise, forget it. There's no way that you can make any relationship with anyone work if you cannot compromise. Get chill. Oh, this is great for both men and women, but uh, if they fail to take responsibility and accountability for when they are wrong. What I must do? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. If you are hurt, and you guys have gone through a fight and a major one at that, right? You guys have gone through a fight. You are completely hurt. You're so devastated and all of this. And that whole time when you are expressing how they hurt you because you've got every right. They cannot dictate to you how they hurt you. They cannot dictate to you why you should be feeling this way. That is not for them. That's for you, right? So if you are dictating to them how they made you feel, and they do not want to take accountability for that red flag.
They'll never take accountability for any of their mistakes. Do you know how hard it is to be with somebody who hardly ever says no? Even in situations where they know they are wrong, they would rather go out of their way to explain, to dissect, to build you a diagram. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean. Yeah, but they're going to do, they're going to build you a diagram. They're going to have lines coming out of it to explain why they did what they did, how you were impacted by it. Is none of their business. They don't care. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to say no to Katewa because why should I? I'm not going to say sorry to Katewa because why should I? Why unjalo tato? Why unjal? Why unjal? Anyege ube right imlungisi when you do things like that. It's going to be hard for you to sustain a relationship where you never want to hold yourself accountable. I can't hold you accountable. I can, but it means nothing. It means nothing if you can't do the same for yourself. So if they don't want to handle the role they played, the responsibility they played, and actually be accountable for what they did in the situation that made it turn out to be that way, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You're going to find yourself digging through the dirt. You're going to be finding yourself digging through the dirt just for an apology that you're not going to get. Often, a lot of the time, you're not going to get that apology. So, good luck. When they are a poor communicator. Not all of us are great communicators. We will lack. Somewhere here and there, we will lack in terms of our communication and how we bring forward, how we engage with others in terms of dialogue and how we respond to certain situations in terms of how we communicate. A lot of us have little flaws here and there, but when they are a poor, like just so bad at communicating especially when things are wrong they'll either shy away they'll either ignore withdraw they'll either um oh my goodness um shout scream maybe they're on the other end of the spectrum right they'll shout scream without actually hearing what's being said to them they'll lose their nuts and marbles and naras and all of this they will absolutely go off the rail off the rail and they're so bad at communicating because they can't listen they can't engage they don't take responsibility they don't take accountability they shut down they give you the silent treatment they do this that and the other they're a poor communicator if they don't actively want to work on that and if you are not seeing any changes happening that's a red flag ah, i'm just tired I never win it. Never. Never. I'm saying if you can see that somebody is really trying their best to communicate with you, right? If they're really trying, they were really terrible at it. But then they do little things where you're like, okay, I'm starting to see the change. That's good. Then exercise a little bit of patient. Patience. However, if they are not, hmm? you will talk to the wall. Because the moment you start speaking to that person, they go, Fuff. they literally bring the chain iron golden door down and they completely shut you out. That's poor communication. That's terrible for any kind of relationship, whether it's familial, whether it's relational, whether it's, it's friendship, it's bad. And finally, finally, if they have a long history of cheating on their ex-partners. You know how when you get into a relationship, you talk about, you know, exes and all of that. And have you cheated before? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, quite a number of times. Mm, okay. Uh, have you cheated before? I know, like just once, but no, I'm not really, no, I'm not really a cheater kind of person, whatever, whatever. But when you ask them, watch them, watch their eyes, watch the hesitation, if there is any hesitation. But if they outrightly tell you, because many men do, you know, 
The dating pool, the relationship pool these days is a, it's a, it's a cesspool. It's got pee in it. But if they do tell you that they have a long history of cheating, where are they? Congratulations! Oh, 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 oh my God! What makes you think when I am Marie Antoinette? Hmm? What makes you think or believe that the situation would be different for you? What? What at all in life makes you think or believe that the situation would be different for you? What? Now, I'd definitely love to know. I'd love to know. Because it's going to be done to you too. They're going to do it to you too. You are not the exception. A lot of the time, you will be the rule. They will do it. They might go quiet a little bit. You know how serial killers have moments where they just go quiet because now it's, it's, it's heat, it's heat. They go quiet and they don't cheat for a while. They will. Eventually. At some point. Especially if this person has a long history of doing just that. What makes you think they're going to stop with you? Get it together. <laughs> That's pretty much it from me. These are the red flags. Some of them, because I know there's a lot. Some of them. These are the red flags that I think you should definitely look out for, especially in the dating pool of 2024, because it's got pee in it. Definitely look out for these things. Watch this person, communicate with them and see how they respond. See how they deal with adversity. See how they deal with confrontation between the two of you. If there's fights and disagreements, watch these things. You will thank me. If there's anything else that you think we should watch out for as the girlies in 2024 and we're dating and doing all these things, let us know down below. Let us come together for each other. Okay? <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Join the membership space if you care. Thank you so much, always, 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 for choosing me over and over again. Until the next video, I'll see you very, very soon. Until then, sayonara.